<laughs> the picture you see right here is a picture composed by a portrait composed by my dear friend, my professional artist friend, Helena Keefe of Oakland, California, who is helping me chronicle my transformations through disfigurement and reconstruction. And you can see here, she found masked me very compelling, as opposed to monstrous me, or monster me, as I like to put it in my pictures. Um, feel free to check out some of our art and our photography on my blog, Queer to the SF, Q H E R E K I D S F dot blogspot dot com or her website Helena Keith H E L E N A K E E F F E dot com or on my Flickr account M Flickr dot com slash photos slash M Blanchard seventy nine. Now why am I making this video today? Sorry about this noise of the computer it's not very well oiled. This is Pooch. I like to call him Rufus, after named after my dog when I was in high school. And again, horizontal lines because horizontal lines are thinning. And vertical lines are thinning, but I like horizontal better. It gives more of a composition. <laughs> and we're all about composition because we need to make this video look beautiful because what you'll see under the mask, eh, not so beautiful. Um, but truly beautiful, if you want to look at it in my perspective. So I'm going to take my glasses off now. Um, and I'll try to look at the camera, which is up here. And not at the screen, which is down here. Because I think if I look at the camera, I'm a first time movie maker, so... <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work out, turn out. Why I'm making the movie. I wanted to commemorate yesterday and the holiday the new year christmas uh, because it was such a spectacular time for me i'm six months sober in nine days january 14th and to celebrate the new year i got a work in progress i got a new nose well halfway there halfway we're halfway there um, and I wanted to show you, because I don't know if I explained this already. You'll notice this if you read my blog or if you read uh, Facebook or my pictures on Flickr, that I suffered in 2007 from a AIDS-related and drug addiction-induced PCP pneumonia, eight-week coma, and during that time period, a polymicrobial necrotizing bacterial infection of the face. Lots of big words. Basically it means I got a bacterial infection in my face, it ate away the skin and the bone, and then everything had to be forcibly eventually amputated before the start of the new year in 2008. Uh, and it's been two years since then, and this is my work in progress. I keep the mask taped to my nose because it helps to secure the mask and cover this up so it doesn't fall down. Which is a habit I got into when I had the nasal flap connecting here where you see the scar, the stitches, and here where you see the stitches and the scar the eyebrow and the nasal labial flap. There was a piece of skin, which you'll see in pictures, hanging right here, which obstructed my view, and I've always wore a mask, as you saw in the picture above, um, to cover it up, except when I was in public or with, in the company and kindness of friends, which, in this day and age, are more than many than few, which I'm grateful for. Um, so I wanted to let everyone see my face 
as a testimony or a demonstration of facial disfigurement. Because there's been so much in the news about um, women getting their faces bit off by chimpanzees or uh, facial transplant. The first one in France, uh, the ones that are happening here. Um, the woman who actually got her face bit off by the ape, um, by the chimpanzee, was on Oprah and showed her face. She looked, she didn't have lips, she didn't have a nose, she had eyes. It was so jarring. This is jarring, but less jarring, and it's a sign of hope. Now, the difference is that she got an entirely new face uh, from a donor. Another person, a dead person, or she will be getting one. Um, she won't have very good muscle control, as I don't have very good muscle control here. Or in this nostril. I can't feel the nostril like I can feel the other one. Watch. I should be on Ellen. <laughs> Just demonstrating my nostril flourage. I used to be a single stick. I used to be able to stick quarters up there. Let me tell you. 75 cents on my nostril. It's like putting Legos in your nose and having them get stuck. Which happened when I was a kid. And my brother. So, enough about that. I wanted to have the courage to post this video on the web to demonstrate a work in progress um, that I'm ever so grateful for. Because I'll tell you, I was 10 times, 1,000 times, unfathomably more fright frightful looking than two days ago than I am now with the nasal legal flap. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking about going without the mask in public. It'll be a uh, exercise in courage, uh, in fortitude, in perseverance. Um, all which I have, all which I've demonstrated to myself and to others in this last two and a half years especially the last six months of recovery. Um, this is what AIDS and crystal meth addiction can do to you. It doesn't happen to any, anyone ever. Happened to me. Hope it never happens to anyone ever again. Happened to me. And I gotta live with it as a reminder every day of the horrifyingly terrible, unconscionable effects of crystal meth and HIV. And I want to say today I'm living proud and healthy. And I'm happy to be progressing through these reconstructions. This nose will look Ten times better in four months when I post my next video. I promise you that. The doctors say they're going to contour it all up, make it look nice and neat, even, symmetrical. Because right now it's a little off kilter and a little swollen. But the inflammation is going to go down and they'll carve and chisel and scrape and do all those nick, nip and tuck things they do you see out on TV. And I'll have a semi quasi normal looking nose and eventually it'll work on my mouth I'll get my lips tattooed on and everything like that so it's great it's I'm alive when I died three times and had to be resuscitated um, and I'm grateful and I wanted to start off the new year with this courageous step of downing my mask and showing you the real me. The next version of me. There will be many more.